In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ave Maria. If you attended uh, the Mass this morning, you'll have heard that today we celebrate the feast day of Our Lady of the Rosary. In fact, today is a wonderful day to be celebrating this day with Mary. It's the first Saturday of the month of Our Lady's Holy Rosary. So if you attended the Mass, or maybe if you know the history, I'd ask you please to lend me some patience. And for those of you who don't know the history of this amazing feast, just over 400 years ago, there was a decisive battle between Christian Europe, Christian Europe, and the Ottoman Turkish Empire. At the Battle of Lepanto, it's a place, Lepanto. Christian kings had lent some ships, some soldiers, and were fighting a battle against a massive fleet of ships. It was a naval battle, massive fleet of ships laid on by the Turkish Ottoman Emperor. And this tiny fleet of Christians were victorious over the Ottoman fleet. The Pope had asked all of the Christians in Europe to pray the Holy Rosary for victory. He had made sure, Pope Pius, he had made sure that every one of the soldiers on the ships had received a Holy Rosary for his protection and knew how to pray it and made sure they prayed it. The Pope himself led in the Holy City of Rome a Rosary procession for the victory of this fleet. And they were victorious. They were victorious against all the odds, against this massive leviathan of, of a naval army of the Ottomans. The Catholic army was victorious. And it became obvious to everybody who knew what was happening, to the Christian leaders, to those who knew, that it was the prayers of our Blessed Lady which had won the battle, not the army, nor the weakness of the enemy, because the army wasn't very strong and the enemy was incredibly powerful. It was our Blessed Lady which led the soldiers to victory. And Our Lady, Queen of Peace, gave from heaven the gift of peace to Europe. One of the Venetian senators, um, Venice was one of the Christian countries that sent soldiers and sailors, said this, it's beautiful, it was not courage, it was not arms, it was not leaders, but Mary of the Rosary that made us victors. Think about that. Think about that beautiful saying of this secular leader. It wasn't worldly power nor worldly emotional strength which won the day. It was the prayers of our Blessed Lady. A spiritual problem requires a spiritual solution. It's very simple, should be obvious. A spiritual problem requires a spiritual solution. And so Our Lady was acclaimed Our Lady of Victories. There's a church very close to here, which is called Our Lady of Victory. So we wish them a happy feast day. And today we celebrate this feast day on the same day under a different title, Our Lady of the Rosary. Wonderful. A spiritual problem needs a spiritual solution. It's significant that, um, that our Blessed Lady appeared in Fatima in 1917 when the most horrific war was taking place. The most horrific war was taking place. They called the First World War the war to end all wars because there was such horror in this war, such an amassing of the dead, there was an idea that there could never be another war in human history, that human beings would be so horrified by this war that there would never be another one. In 1918, peace was declared, but the peace that was declared laid the roots for the subsequent Second World War after which there has not been one day of peace in the world. Not one day of peace. 
Now, this is not a history lesson about battles and wars of the past. Cheer up, Father Tom. It's not the end of the world, isn't it? But it is worth considering that war is a spiritual problem, and spiritual problems can only be healed with spiritual remedies. And the spiritual remedy that our Blessed Lady has given us, that we celebrate today, that we celebrate in this whole month, is the remedy from heaven, the Holy Rosary. The Holy Rosary by which Our Lady is victorious. Now, there are a great many other remedies for spiritual problems, but this is the one we're talking about. This one we're focusing on. This is the one that has been given to us by Our Blessed Lady. Pray the rosary every day for an end of the war. Our Blessed Lady said it many times in the apparitions at Fatima. In each successive month, she said it in different ways. Pray the rosary every day to obtain peace for the world and an end of the war. Firstly, we should give thanks to God and the angels and the saints for caring about us enough that they notice when we're having a war on us. We should thank God. We should thank the Queen of Heaven, who is not aloof from our problems, who is not aloof from the world, but who gives us spiritual remedies, who gives us the rosary for peace. The war of 1917, in a very real sense, is still being played out today. So let's be aware of all the various wars that are raging in our own time, which deprive us of peace. And as I can see it, in my limited way, I can see that there are three types of wars that are being played out even now. First, the wars we all know about, the great geopolitical wars between nations, within nations, the war on terror, the war on drugs, all these different wars that are being played out in the news. And if we watch the news, we see some tragedy, some fresh conflict breaking out, some fresh atrocity. And we think, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Our Lady has told us, kneel down, take your rosary and pray the Holy Rosary for an end to the war. Secondly, there are wars which we create in our own lives or which we suffer from in our own lives. Not these great geopolitical wars, but the wars in our local area between neighbours, between friends, between families, little battles, and actually they're very similar to these big wars because you recruit people to take sides. Did you hear what she said about me? Did you see the way he looked at me? We try and recruit people to our side. They resemble wars because sometimes there are truces and there are little battles which spring up between the two sides. What can we do for the unity of our family? What can we do for peace in our street, peace in our parish, peace in our social group? We can kneel down and pray the rosary for peace in the world. And then the third, there is the war which happens within our own soul, avoiding evil, doing good. It's not easy, it's a battle. No one said it was going to be easy, it's a battle. The battle to overcome ourselves, to overcome our egotism, to overcome our pride, to live for God, to grow in virtue is a battle, a battle within ourselves. I heard of a very famous Dominican, very learned, very learned man who lived in Jerusalem. He lived in Jerusalem because he was an expert in ancient texts and he researched the ancient texts, the Hebrew texts, the Greek texts, the ancient Bibles. He was so learned that 
great men would come to him and ask his opinion and listen to him, sought him out. And so this Dominican was very tempted, he said, to pride. And that's what's going to happen if great men seek you out. Be very tempted to pride. He was clever, thank God, and he, a great many people knew it. So every day, this Dominican, this old Dominican, this learned Dominican, walked through the old city of Jerusalem, up and down through the old city of Jerusalem, reciting all 15 decades, 15 at that time, all 15 decades of the Holy Rosary. And someone, someone asked him, Father, why are you praying the Rosary? Which is, um, well, it's a question, it's a question. And this Dominican, because he was very wise, he said, I pray the Rosary because it decapitates pride. The Holy Rosary is a weapon that has been given to us by Our Lady. It's her weapon so that we can grow in holiness. And it's worth considering that at all the major apparitions of Our Blessed Lady, she, there has been a teaching of the Rosary. When Our Lady appeared at Lourdes, she was fingering and mouthing the Rosary teaching Bernadette the proper way to pray. Garabandal, we can see the children learning to pray in a very beautiful way. The angel appeared in Fatima to teach the children to pray the Holy Rosary. It is her weapon. She teaches us how to grow in holiness. When we use her weapon, the victory is hers. In the end, my immaculate heart will triumph, she says. Our Lady is victorious. Our Lady will be victorious. If you have the Miraculous Medal on you, you can have a look at it. The Miraculous Medal is kind of a pet name that the Church has given it, but really it's the Medal of the Immaculate Conception. Our Lady is the Immaculate Conception. She has an Immaculate Heart, and in the end, her Immaculate Heart will triumph. Look at the Miraculous Medal, and you will see our Blessed Lady, victorious over the serpent, treading under her feet the devil. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. Let's be clear. The victory that we are looking for, the victory that we are praying for, is not the victory of one man over another. Oh, I'm praying the rosary for Brexit. I'm praying the rosary for Jeremy Corbyn. We're not, we're not praying the rosary that one ideology be uh, defeating another ideology, that one political party defeat another political party. These are the small and petty victories of the world, and they will always be the same. They have always been the same. What we are talking about, what we are praying for, and what we have been promised from heaven is the victory of God. It's the victory of the good over the bad. God who is good over the bad. The victory of truth over lies. The victory of God who is truth over the father of lies. The victory of the beautiful over the ugliness of sin. This is what we're praying for. This is what we have been promised. And my brothers and sisters, this is a promise that has been made to us by our Holy Mother. In the end, my immaculate heart will triumph. And this is our great hope. This is our hope. This is our joy. Spes Nostra. This is our hope. So, my brothers and sisters, let us make a firm decision at this day with Mary, on this feast day of Our Lady of Victories, in this first Saturday of the month of Our Lady's Holy Rosary, 
to take up the weapons of the cross and the rosary, to take up each day prayer and penance. In prayer and penance, we are united with the glorious, sorrowful and immaculate heart of Mary. We can join in her procession, the procession of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart, the procession of Our Lady's Sorrowful Heart, and advance with her into the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.